So our Bible readings will be a part of our meditative scripture reading in a moment. We'll start with a reading from the writings of Emanuel Swedenborg, True Christianity number 530. The question then is, how are we to repent? The answer is we are to do so actively. That is, we are to examine ourselves, recognize and admit to our sins, pray to the Lord, and begin a new life. And what is the point of examining ourselves unless we recognize our sins? What is the point of that recognition unless we admit that those sins are in us? What is the point of all three unless these, of these steps unless we confess our sins before the Lord, pray for the Lord's help, and then begin a new life, which is the purpose of the whole exercise? This is active repentance. Repentance becomes effective if we practice it regularly. That is, every time we prepare ourselves to take the communion of the Holy Supper, afterward, if we abstain from one sin or another that we have discovered in ourselves, that is enough to make our repentance real. When we reach this point, we are on the pathway to heaven because we then begin to turn from an earthly person into a spiritual person and to be born anew with the help of the Lord. So my friends, we are here finally in the season of Lent, believe it or not. This is the part of the liturgical year when we are asked to take the blinders from our eyes and really sit with our failings, to not shy away or to make excuses, but to face them head on. Today, we enter into the practice of seeing and feeling what we have done wrong, what we can do better. Soon enough, We'll be celebrating Easter, and we will be bathed in the joy of the resurrection. But for now, with courage and seriousness, we recognize our limitations. We recognize our shortcomings. We recognize our capitulations and our complicity. We confess. We convict. We try to move forward. But we do not do so alone. We journey with God by our side. And one way we can feel and appreciate that presence is via God's word and its connection to our own circumstance and challenges. So today we'll be doing a meditative scripture reading interlaced with some breath prayer. The readings will be from the Gospel of Matthew, picturing Jesus' baptism and then his temptation in the wilderness. And as we hear these various temptations, we can recognize their representative and metaphorical nature. They will show up in their own forms in our own lives. So when you hear turning the stones to bread, that might speak of us of the ways we turn inward, using our gifts and our resources only for ourselves, when instead they could serve others. The throwing ourselves from the temple might speak to us of the ways we seek to make our relationship with God transactional instead of transformational. And the temptation to rule the world might speak to us of the ways we are tempted to buy into the stories the world tells us about the way things are or ought to be, ways that we know are not just or loving. And as you hear these representative temptations, I invite you to consider what they mean to you in your own context. And then, as you do, to rest in the psalms that are offered for the breath prayer. Lent is a season for seeking clarity and for taking brave steps towards change. And we are most able to do that when we know God is with us. So we will alternatively search with the Matthew texts and then come home with the Psalms, one after another. And then finally, we will end with a blessing. So I invite you oops, to settle in your seat wherever you are, get comfortable, to take a deep breath, 
close your eyes if you wish. One more deep breath to settle us and focus us. From Matthew chapter 3, verses 13 through 17. Then Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to be baptized by John. But John tried to deter him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? Jesus replied, Let it be so now. It is proper for us to do this to fulfill all righteousness. Then John consented. As soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water. At that moment, heaven was opened, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, whom I love, and with him I am well pleased. From Psalm 149. 139. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. So I invite you to breathe in as you say, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. And breathe out. Your works are wonderful. Breathe in. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Breathe out. Your works are wonderful. Breathe in. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Breathe out. Your works are wonderful. Breathe in. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Breathe out. Your works are wonderful. From the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 4, verses 1 through 4. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. After fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. The tempter came to him and said, if you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Jesus answered, It is written, Man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. From Psalm 19. The law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The statutes of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. Breathe in. The law of the Lord is perfect. Breathe out, refreshing the soul. Breathe in. The law of the Lord is perfect. Breathe out, refreshing the soul. The law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. From Matthew chapter 4, verses 5 through 7. Then the devil took him to the holy city and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the son of God, he said, throw yourself down. For it is written, he will command his angels concerning you and they will lift you up in their hands so you will not strike your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, it is also written, do not put the Lord your God to the test. From Psalm 71. Be my rock of refuge, to which I can always go. 
You have given the command to save me, for you are my rock and my fortress. Breathe in. Be my rock of refuge. Breathe out, to which I can always go. Breathe in. Be my rock of refuge. Breathe out, to which I can always go. Be my rock of refuge, to which I can always go. Be my rock of refuge, to which I can always go. From Matthew chapter 4, verses 8 through 11. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. All this I will give you, he said, if you will bow down and worship me. Jesus said to him, Away from me, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Then the devil left him, and angels came and attended him. From Psalm 121. I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord the maker of heaven and earth. Breathe in. My help comes from the Lord. Breathe out. The maker of heaven and earth. Breathe in. My help comes from the Lord. Breathe out. The maker of heaven and earth. My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. And finally, a blessing. Blessing the Dust by Jan Richardson. All those days you felt like dust, like dirt, as if all you had to do was turn your face toward the wind and be scattered to the four corners or swept away by the smallest breath as insubstantial. Did you not know what the Holy One can do with dust. This is the day we freely say we are scorched. This is the hour we are marked by what has made it through the burning. This is the moment we ask for the blessing that lives within the ancient ashes that makes its home inside the soil of this sacred earth. So let us not be marked, not for sorrow. Let us be marked, not for shame. Let us be marked, not for false humility or for thinking we are less than we are, but for claiming what can God can do within the dust, within the stuff of which the world is made, and the stars that blaze in our bones, and the galaxies that spiral inside the smudge we bear. Amen.